Absolutely anyone can self-host at their own password manager for free. And I'm going to show you how. So currently I'm using LastPass as my password manager. I know. Yeah, I know. So it's time to stop giving passwords away to other companies that keep getting attacked and self-host them using a private server and Passbolt, a free open source password manager. So since you'll be self-hosting this password manager, you still need a secure place to put all of your data and passwords. This can actually be anything, an old PC or a laptop that you have, or even a Raspberry Pi. But for me personally, I'll do this tutorial using cloud storage and I'm gonna be using DigitalOcean just because they offer $200 worth of credits for 60 days if you use the link in the description. So you essentially get to try them out and if it's not something you like, you can just delete all of your data altogether. To get started, just create a free account on DigitalOcean and then you'll need to create a server. For our purposes, the location of this server doesn't really matter. But if you also want to use this server to host a website, choose a location that's going to be closest to your visitors. Another reason why using DigitalOcean is a little bit easier is because they already have a pre-configured image of Passbolt that we need. So click on OS Marketplace and type in Passbolt. Now for CPU options, Passbolt recommends you have at least two cores. But even the cheapest option works for this. I've tried it out there were no problems. But I'm gonna use the two core one because you don't actually get charged $18 a month, you get charged by the hour. So if you're just testing this out, you get $200 free credits, you test this for one hour, you delete it, you've spent two cents of already free money. Finally, create your root password and your set. Click on create droplet. It'll take a few seconds to initialize the server, but as you can see here, my account is only using the $200 of free credits. Now, the first thing we need to do is point a domain to the IP address of this server, so we can connect using an actual name, not just an IP address. To keep in line with the theme of everything being free in this video, I'm just gonna create a free subdomain called pass.emitreviews.com, but you can create any free subdomain. If you don't know how, I have a tutorial right around here. So now, after I type in pass.emitreviews.com, I can see that everything is working correctly. Keep in mind that it can take around 10 to 15 minutes to start working. However, there is no SSL installed, Let's fix that, because sensitive information will be passing through this domain, so we need for it to be secure. To do this, access the console of your server and wait for it to connect. All of the instructions we need to follow are actually written right here, so let's do exactly what it says. Copy this line, type in nano, and paste in what you've just copied. Now we're inside the passbolt.conf file Use the arrow keys on your keyboard to navigate to the server name line and type in your domain name that needs the SSL. For me, it's pass.emitreviews.com. Once you're done, press Ctrl and X at the same time to exit, then Y to save changes, and finally just press Enter. Okay, so let's follow the second step. Copy this command and paste it in. Now again, using the arrow keys, delete that part that's inside the percentage signs and type in CE instead, because that's the version of Passbolt that we're using. After you get this screen, just select No for local MySQL and Yes for Nginx. For the SSL installation, choose Auto and type in the website name again. For me, it's passbolt.emitreviews.com. Finally, add in the administrator email and you should be set. The final thing you need to do is just reload nginx by copying and pasting this command. Really simple. Now, if you would visit your domain name again using HTTPS, you can see it's protected by an SSL certificate. So all of the information that's traveling through this domain is encrypted and secure. Now, let's start configuring Passbolt by pressing get started. As you can see, Passbolt indicated that we've set up everything correctly and that we're ready to start the configuration. Here, just click Next, think of any name you want for your server and add in an administrative email for notifications. Let's keep these settings as is as well. 
Now for email configuration, you can type in anything you want. It doesn't matter here because we'll reset up this for free using Gmail later. For now, feel free to copy what I've inputted and just click on next. Finally, let's create our admin account for Passball. After some wait time, you'll get a pop-up to install an add-on for the browser that you're currently using. I'm using Firefox, so I just need to click on download the extension, add to Firefox and add again. Now, create your master password. This needs to be really secure because this is what's going to unlock all of your passwords. And this is the only password that you'll actually need to remember. Make it really, really secure. Finally, you'll get a recovery kit. Store it safely and make sure nobody gets their hands on it. Finally, create a secure, unique token. It can be anything you want. I'll go with Emmy and my logo color. This is just to prevent phishing attacks. And boom, you're in. You have a free password manager extension where you can store your passwords on your virtual private server. But let's get the SMTP emails set up so you can send invites and send lost password reminders as well. To do so, navigate to administration, then email server and choose Google Mail. Click on this more information button because we'll need to set up an app password. Here, click on this Google account button and follow the instructions. I'm using a free personal Gmail account for this. I'll name this password Passbolt and just copy this. Then go back to Passbolt for my username, use the full Gmail account and paste in the password you've just copied. You can even send out a test email to see if it's working. And yep, the free Gmail SMTP server is working just fine. Don't forget to save your settings, by the way. Now you can actually allow anyone you want to use this password manager. Just send them an invite and they'll be able to set up their account via email. And yeah, all of this is done for free using the Google SMTP email server. Okay, so now we can talk about the elephant in the room. Is this more secure than buying a password manager subscription? Yes and no. Large password managers like LastPass have better security than you ever will. This is just a fact. But the biggest line of protection you have, if you're going this route, is anonymity, meaning people would have to go after you directly. Most of us are boring. Nobody got time to go after somebody individually, but they do try to hack big providers in an attempt to score big. And when they're trying to score big, that big pile of passwords might include your data as well. So use this free self-hosted password manager with care, the software is secure, but the weakest line of defense is never the software, it's always the users. So stay vigilant. And if you're also looking to create a website completely free, check out this video next. See ya.